Hey everyone, it's Michael, and yeah, that Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight is right around the corner. I think two days out from now, Saturday, April 17th, and with that, we gotta obviously do a small little breakdown and talk about the elephant in the room regarding my reservations as to Ben Askren's chances, aka address the video I made a couple months ago. Now, before we get into the breakdown, I'm going to answer some questions that a lot of people had in the comment section, in the Instagram DMs, and stopping me personally to hound me when talking about that specific video. Now, the first question I usually get is, do you honestly think Jake Paul was going to murder Ben Askren? Or, you know, do I think Jake Paul was going to beat Ben Askren? And I think the answer to that question that I need to be clear was... That wasn't the point of the video. Um, the point of the video was just to stress that it's going to be competitive. I think the important thing to realize, or at least for me to kind of peel back the curtain a little bit or give context to the whole thing was the video was almost a response to what a lot of my friends, training partners, and Facebook MMA groups were kind of saying about Jake Paul's chances more so than it was an official prediction video. And I didn't really give a prediction. I was just kind of stating the facts that Jake Paul was probably going to open up as the betting favorite, which admittedly I wasn't clear about. I just kind of said underdog favorite, kind of throwing the lingo out there and not being as clear as I should have been. So that's my bad. But the point I was trying to make to those people, and I think a lot of people got it, but there were some people who kind of took it one step further, was that the fight was going to be competitive when looking at Ben Askren's skills and Jake Paul's skills, right? Ben Askren has never been the best striker in the world. He's probably the worst striker MMA has had to offer, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At least in the pros. Like, at least when it comes to, um, we're talking... UFC, we're talking Bellator, we're talking one championship. He was probably the worst technical striker that those organizations had to offer. And what got him his impressive record and what got him kind of the moniker of the best fighter to fight outside of the UFC was the fact that he could wrestle his face off. So, yeah, I think that was the point I was trying to express. And yeah, look, at the end of the day, Ben Askren was the underdog when the fight was in talks and was the underdog for a lot of this fight camp. Um, I believe he still is the underdog, but maybe not. And we'll get into why he might not be the underdog later in the video. But first, the other question I get asked, what makes you so confident in Jake Paul's skills? And the answer to that question is, I'm not necessarily confident in Jake Paul's skills, but I'm confident in my assessment that both guys would give each other a competitive fight. Here's the thing. Ben Askren was not only the worst technical striker the UFC had to offer, or at least any kind of reputable top-tier pro MMA organization had to offer. He also was retired for 15 months and had a bad hip that needed a hip replacement surgery. Um, I don't know if he got that surgery or if it was a alternative solution. I can't remember what exactly happened, but he got that surgery. So he was coming off of surgery, retired for 15 months, and was already, before the hip really got bad, one of, if not the worst technical striker, the big three organizations of Bellator won, and the UFC, as well as, I would even throw PFL and Brave in there. Oh, and Risen. Had to offer. So, adding that up, and saying that he might even be a worse technical striker than some guys in the regional promotion, and some guys in amateur promotions, from a technical striker perspective, and then adding the fact that Jake Paul is not taking shortcuts with boxing, he is legitimately training his boxing, and he's giving it the seriousness and gravitas it needs. Plus, he has legit power. Plus, I saw sparring footage. Both of those things kind of gave me pause 
from kind of just saying Ben Askren will win this in two rounds and throw my, you know, head away from it. And look, I'm a Ben Askren fan through and through. I want him to win really, really badly. And even when he was in the UFC, I was pulling for him to actually win the welterweight championship because I like what Ben Askren is about. But I'm just stating the facts. Okay, with all that out of the way, who do I think is actually going to win the fight? And I have to go with Ben Askren. Now, even before what I'm going to mention happened, Ben Askren has fight experience. And that's something that doesn't just go away. Ben Askren's built those instincts for fighting and they'll stay with him forever. He knows what's like to be in a ring or a cage. He knows what's like to be in a combat sport in front of thousands of people. Um, I don't know if Triller is doing a closed door event or an open door event. I can't remember, but the point is he still knows what's like to be in a combat sports environment live fight environment and he's done it against some of the best strikers in the world and he's had to be composed display endurance and follow a game plan he also has sneaky good cardio i don't know how much of that cardio has been maintained because again this is a guy who hasn't fought in a year and a half but i thought that he would have the cardio advantage I thought he would wear him down, and I thought that Ben Askren would come away with, if not a knockout in the later rounds, a decision win, but it was going to be way too competitive for it to be a good look for MMA. That's what I was trying to say. But after looking at some of the footage and the public open workout and the press conferences, I think Ben Askren might win this outright. If not a KO in the later rounds, it might go early. And the reason why is Ben Askren has the cardio edge. Ben Askren has the ability to execute a game plan and has shown it numerous times over and over. Ben Askren has the mental game figured out and has already kind of undressed I mean that figuratively, but has kind of already undressed Jake Paul in the press conferences to the point where you're seeing Jake Paul's body language kind of start to change, where he's kind of starting to doubt himself a little bit. But now, after looking at the footage, Ben Askren is lighter on his feet. Ben Askren looks massively improved on the pads. Now, there are still some things that Ben Askren should work on. You know, it would behoove him to keep his hands a little higher i know that he likes to kind of keep him around his chest area maybe chin level would be nice but baby steps right but yeah he looks massively improved and don't get me wrong i think let's say both guys were both o and o and had no experience and ben Askren looked like what he looked like on the pads even today i would say it would be competitive and i would say that jake paul might actually have a shot not a big one. I would say 30, maybe 40% to 60% for Ben Askren. Um, maybe even 55, 45. But because Ben Askren has kind of competed in an environment, a high stress environment when it comes to athletics and when it comes to combat sports and has demonstrated the ability to stay composed and impose a game plan and has demonstrated good cardio... Um, even on the pads, he's talking and hitting power shots. I think Ben Askren has a commanding advantage. If I had to put a percentage number on it, I'd say 80 to 20%. So all's that to say that, yeah, I might have eaten a little bit of crow on that video. I do think Jake Paul will have his moment still. Ben's hands are way too low for Jake Paul not to come away with a couple punches here and there. But I do think because Ben has demonstrated good cardio and another thing is he's demonstrated a great chin and has demonstrated again a mentality for combat sports, Ben Askren should come away with the victory unless things fall off a cliff and very realistically it could have. Maybe he reverts back to some of his bad habits. Maybe Jake Paul has gotten better and figures out a way to kind of punish Ben Askren for those bad habits 
lots of things could happen. But given what I've seen from Ben's camp, I think Ben Askren will win. And I'm actually a lot more confident than I was when I made that video um, a couple months ago in February. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. We've really gotten an uptick in subscribers lately. And that's only thanks to good people who have been sticking with us and really just spreading the good word. So thank you all for doing that for us. But anyway, have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, stay safe.